Okay, uh, good morning already. This is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. Okay, my next discussion will be a long video format discussion on alternating current circuit and this will now be lesson number 22. The title of the topic is uh, Norton's Theorem. Okay, let's proceed. The topic for this morning will be alternating current circuit. This should be lesson number 22 and this is uh, Norton's Theorem. Oh, it is one of the advanced solution on how to compute the current of a load. Okay, if that load is connected to the terminal of an active network. The last time around I discussed the so-called Thevenin's theorem. Thevenin's theorem is actually the so-called uh, constant voltage source. Okay, in which if we try to take the equivalent of an active network, the constant voltage source is in series with the impedance across the terminals, okay, in series. But for this Norton's theorem, what comes out is supposed to be a constant current source. And this should be in parallel with the impedance across the terminals of the network when that network is uh, short-circuited or open-circuited. Okay, uh, I will try to read uh, what is Norton's theorem. Uh, Norton is a family name of, of the one who invented this Norton's theorem. Okay, uh, a little bit long, but uh, we could summarize this one later on. Okay, I will try to read Norton's theorem. Any two terminal network of fixed impedances and sources of AMF can be replaced by a single source of AMF open quantity, close quantity, constant current source, okay, whose current is equal to the current drawn at the terminals when short-circuited and having an impedance in parallel available at the terminals when all the voltage sources are replaced by their internal impedances. Uh, this internal impedances meaning at the time of the computation of the short circuit current, uh, we short all voltage sources in it. And if there are imp internal impedances, it should be included in the computation. If there are none, there should be nothing. But if there is internal impedance, that internal impedance should be included in the computation of the open circuit impedance at the terminals. Okay, uh, let's try to summarize. Uh, Norton theorem. Uh, Mr. Norton says that uh, if we are, if we are given an active network, okay, he invented a solution on how to compute the current passing through this load here. Okay, originally uh, the load is not connected, right? And when he wants to connect the load, he wants to find out what will be the current drawn by that load. The current, I, I so bad. Like Mr. Nor, uh, Mr. Tibbenes, it's the same. When he, what he call this, connect uh, the, C, the load CL across the terminals of the active network, he wanted also to find the current passing through that load by using his theorem. But for Mr. Norton's, he wanted also to, com to compute for the current drawn by this uh, load CL when this load CL is connected to the terminals of the given active network and an active network contains voltage sources E inside and got some impedances inside or there could be some internal impedance C sub N on this one here right so the one inside it got voltage source it got impedances okay and Mr. Norton wanted to find the current drawn by this load CL here if he wants uh, this uh, load CL to be connected across this what will be the load current okay the procedure on how to bring out uh, the Norton's theorem equivalent is this one number one solve for I capital letter I with the subscript SC meaning SC is a short circuit current 
Okay? So, solve for the I with the subscription, meaning short circuit current, the available short circuit current at the terminals. Uh, meaning to say, <coughs> if Mr. Norton tried to short out the terminals, okay, short circuit, put a jumper over here, then he, he wanted to find the current passing through this. And he turned that one as a short circuit current. Okay. For Mr. Tibbins, okay, instead of the short circuit current, what uh, he wants, uh, what he computed the last time around is actually ETH, the Tibbins open circuit voltage. That's why Tibbins theorem is the so called constant voltage source. And for Norton's theorem, is, it's the so-called constant current source. This theorem is termed to as constant current source. So, for Mr. Norton's, step number one, he will try to short out the terminals. Okay? Then compute for the short circuit current that will be coming out from the tester, maybe. Or from the tester, right? Because if you short, it, short out this one, it's either that you will connect an ammeter in series or you would use a clamp meter, clamp meter, right? So you don't have to disconnect the terminal or it. Just push a clamp ammeter in the current consumption. Current that passes through that short circuit will come out. Also, that will be step number one. For us, uh, engineers, okay, in the computation of the short circuit current, we will use our knowledge of the uh, concepts of uh, circuitry, right? That's, that's in the computation of this. But for Mr. Norton's, he just shorted out this one, right? And from his meter, he will try to read the short circuit current. Okay? Step number two. Solve for capital letter Z with the subscript N. Uh, this in here refers to Norton, right? So this is uh, impedance for Norton, right? The, the available open circuit impedance of the terminals. So after computing the so-called uh, short circuit current, okay, he will remove the short, right? Then he will try to place uh, uh, an impedance meter across this. Uh, it's open circuit, so he will tap the impedance meter and he wanted to measure the value of C sub n and that is turned to as C sub n. Okay, that's step number two. For us uh, who are engineers working on the board or on our uh, worksheets, okay, uh, we will be using our knowledge of the concepts of electricity and how to compute for C n. Our knowledge on how to compute impedances in series and parallel. And for current, uh, use Ohm's law. Voltage is equal to IC, right? Uh, number three, draw the Norton's equivalent circuit and reconnect ZL. The Norton's equivalent circuit will be a constant current source, okay? The computed open circuit impedance should be connected in parallel with this. Okay? For uh, <coughs> what I call this, uh, for Tebinens, uh, it was the opposite. Uh, the computed uh, CTH is actually in series, right? In series with the constant voltage source. But for uh, Mr. Norton's, okay, ZN is connected in parallel with the constant current source inside. Right? It is in parallel. Okay? The voltage across this is equal to this. They are connected in parallel. So for Norton's, the connection is parallel. The constant current source and the open circuit impedance Z sub N are in parallel. That is for Norton's. Norton's theorem. But for Tevinen's, the constant voltage source is in series. So that's the difference. That's why the Tevinen's theorem is different from the Norton's theorem. Right? And number four, we could now compute for the value of the load current 
because uh, <coughs> upon taking the Norton's equivalent circuit, these two here are in parallel, we will reconnect the load C sub L over here, right? From here. We will try to reconnect. So if we, after the reconnection, what comes out? The Norton's impedance is actually in parallel with the load impedance. Unlike on the so-called uh, Thevenin's theorem, okay? This is C sub L. Under Thevenin's, uh, the impedances are in series. But for Norton's, they are in parallel. So the concept on how to compute for the current is different, okay? It's different. Okay, now let's try to bring out the concept on how or the formula on how to compute for the load current. It's easy. So we just use our knowledge of the concept of uh, parallel circuit. For parallel circuit, the voltage across this is equal to this, right? So there is an equation here, B with the subscript N is equal to B with the subscript N, meaning the voltage across the impedance CN is equal to the voltage across the load CL. That's why this N here refers to N here, and this N here refers to N here. The voltage uh, across the impedance load is equal to the voltage across the impedance C sub N, which was computed under step number two, right? And what is voltage? Voltage is equal to IC, considering AC circuit, right? So if we try to use this one, then we will try to place the subscript. If we are computing for uh, B sub N, it should be I sub N, C sub N. And if we are computing for B sub L, it, they should be I sub L, C sub L, right? That's where we got this one. But at this uh, node here or junction, the total current coming in is short circuit current, the one computed from step number one, right? And uh, <coughs> just see this. The current uh, passing here is the unknown current, right? So if this is the short circuit current, because the sum of I short circuit is actually I sub N plus I sub L, right? So if we are computing for the difference of I short circuit minus I sub L, we transpose this one to the left, and that will be equal to I sub Norton's. Okay? So I sub Norton's now is the difference I short circuit minus I sub L. The current passing here should be the total short circuit current minus the load current times C sub N. And for the voltage across this, it will just simply be the product of I sub L times C sub L. Right? I sub L, C sub L. Subscript L, subscript L, this is subscript N. Right? So if we try to rearrange this one, what will come out? Uh, this, this negative I sub L, C sub N, right? We put it on the right. So this is now plus. Okay? I L, C L is this one. This one we transpose already to the right. So what remains on the left will be the short circuit error times C sub L. And uh, try to factor out I sub L over here. So this is I sub L. We rearrange already. We put this one on the left. Times the sum of C sub L plus C sub N close quantity equal to I short circuit times C sub L. Okay, so to compute for this, we divide both sides of the equation by CL plus CN. So IL now will be this short circuit current, okay, which was computed using step number one. And times the value of C sub N, C sub N, okay, which was computed using step number two. Right? All over the sum of C sub L plus C sub N, this will be in amperes. Okay, that, that's it. That's Norton's theorem. It was different from the Thevenin's. Step number one, solve for the short circuit current. For Thevenin's, solve for the open circuit voltage. For step number two, they were the same. Okay, uh, they try to compute the open circuit impedance. So the procedure and how to compute for C sub N and C Thevenin's are, are the same. Except for number one, because for number one, since Norton's theorem is a constant current source, 
what will be computed under step number one will be the short circuit level. For turbulence, it is the open circuit voltage. Okay? Then number three, draw the Norton's equivalent circuit. For Norton's, okay, the constant current source is connected in parallel, okay, with the constant current source. It is not in series. For turbulence, it is in series. Right? It is in series. That is for turbulence. Okay? It is in series. For Norton's, it is in parallel. So the, the, the difference between these two here is uh, for turbulence, the constant voltage source for turbulence is in series with the CTH, and for Norton's theorem, the constant current source is connected in parallel with the constant current source. Uh, the constant current source is termed to as the short circuit current, okay? The one computed using step number one. Because you will short the terminals, put your ammeter, what comes out for the current, that will be the short circuit current. Okay, uh, that's it, guys. That's uh, Norton's theorem. So, one of the advanced uh, solutions of circuitry under alternating current, even though under the uh, current circuit, it is Norton's theorem. So, for those of you who are thinking of uh, uh, KAC circuit, this is for you guys. If you want to subscribe to my channel, my channel is at youtube.com slash at Group DVJ groceries. If you want to share it, please click share. Okay, try to watch my long video format discussions on AC circuit. I assure you, you will learn something from it. Okay, uh, good morning from Los Angeles.